Hi friends, Arthur Wellapod here with another Fallout 4 video. And now today I would like to talk about perks uh, and some of the decisions that you need to make when you're starting out a Fallout 4 run. Now there are a few categories of perks I'd like to talk about. The first category is your weapon perks. Now this is related to one of those decisions uh, that I mentioned and that is what type of weapon that you are planning on using. I do recommend specializing rather than uh, spreading out and just getting all of them. Uh, spreading out gives you a lot of versatility uh, but I think it's uh, for me it's, it's better to uh, specialize. Now there are six basic types of weapon in the game. The main four are pistols, rifles, automatic weapons and melee weapons. Uh, the other two I'll get to in a moment. Um, each has its own perk. Now for pistols that perk is in the agility tree. It's right here. Really easy to get. You only need one point of agility so anybody can get this perk. Uh, and this allows pistols to do more and more damage the more points you put into it. And there's a few uh, uh, extra features as well like disarming opponents, crippling limbs, thing, things like that. So that's the perk that you choose should you want to use pistols. Rifles on the other hand are over here in perception. That's riflemen and same thing. You've got five uh, 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 points in it by the time you get to level 45. They do more damage, uh, pierce armor, uh, and cripple limbs. Uh, pistols are generally low AP which means you can queue up a lot of shots in vats for them. Um, rifles are higher AP and if you put a scope in a rifle to make it a sniper rifle you, you really just won't be using vats at all for most of the time because you'll get maybe one shot in vats. Uh, commando over here back in agility is for automatic weapons. This is uh, automatic pistols like the 10mm or automatic rifles uh, like your combat rifle. Uh, that's uh, the perk that you need for automatic weapons. Now there's actually two different kinds of melee uh, weapon and each has its own feat. They're over here in strength. There's big leagues if you want to use uh, weapons like baseball bats and sledgehammers or there's Iron Fist which is for unarmed attacks or knuckles or power fists. They're both basically the same um, in terms of uh, the way they work. Uh, they just uh, have two separate feats for that and you can choose. Um, I tend, if I'm going a melee build, I tend to go for big leagues rather than unarmed. I might try an unarmed build um, at some point, uh, maybe maybe my next character, uh, but y you can get some really, really, really good melee weapons that you can use with the, with the big leagues perk. Now the other two uh, weapon types are big guns and uh, explosives. So big guns is further on down in the strength tree, uh, the heavy gunner. Uh, this is things like mini guns, rocket launchers, junk jet, things like that. Um, they are very heavy, very powerful weapons, but you don't really get access to them in the early game. Uh, you do get given a mini gun and some ammo for the mini gun, 5mm ammo, uh, in one of the very first missions. Um, and you get to use it to see what it's like, but it chews through that ammo very, very quickly, and uh, you don't find the 5mm ammo either lying around the wasteland or at vendors very much in the quantities that you need for the minigun uh, until you're much, much higher levels. So for that reason, I recommend not going straight into Heavy Gunner um, at, the very, at the very first few per choices. I would take one of the other weapon types. Uh, it synergizes really really well with the melee builds um, uh, and, and I would um, pivot into heavy guns in the later game. Explosives, uh, here it is in Demolition Expert in the Perception Tree uh, and this is for grenades uh, but it's also for things like missiles 
Uh, so these two work together if you if you pick up a missile launcher, which you can pretty early on. Um, there's one right outside Backstreet Apparel, so uh, you can get a missile launcher fairly early on. Um, but the more uh, 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 perk points you put into Demolition Expert, the greater the area effect uh, of your explosives and the more damage they do. Uh, so uh, they're the basic weapon types and the first um, perk choice that you need to make. You actually want to make this decision way back before the bombs fall when you're creating your character. Do you put more points into agility so you can do gunslinger or commando? Do you put it into uh, perception so you can do rifleman or demolition expert? Or do you put it into strength so you can do big leagues or iron fist and heavy guns. That's the first choice that you make other than your appearance. Uh, so uh, the next category of uh, perks that I'd like to talk about is the crafting perks. Now these overlap with your weapon perks but they overlap kind of differently. Um, for the crafting perks uh, you've got categories of weapons that aren't to do with whether they're a rifle or a pistol. Uh, you've got ballistic weapons. The ballistic weapons fire bullets. Now for ballistic weapons your crafting perk is gun nut. Now there are specific upgrades. Uh, the higher level upgrades require a higher level of gun nut. Um, that's, it, it's very very straightforward. All of these crafting perks do this. Uh, so if you're going to be shooting bullets, shooting like a, using a, a ballistic gun you're going to upgrade it using gun nut uh, in the in the uh, oh, sorry these are these are intelligence based perks um, the other main category of, of weapons is energy weapons and the crafting perk you want for energy weapons is here it's called science and uh, that allows you in the same linear fashion to get better and better mods for your energy weapons. Now again, you don't get energy weapons very early in the game. They start to crop up around level 10 to 12 to 15 or so, depending on your difficulty, depending on what kind of enemies you're facing. Gunners drop energy weapons a lot, uh, but those energy weapons you'll be upgrading with the science perk. Now remember, the minigun is a ballistic weapon and is upgraded using gun nut. The uh, Gatling laser is an energy weapon and it's upgraded using science. Uh, so th both heavy, uh, big guns, both heavy weapons, but two different upgrade perks uh, to use with them. You've also got the uh, blacksmith um, up here. This is in the strength tree, this is the, the one that you use to upgrade your melee weapons. Uh, so nicely fits there in the uh, in the strength uh, tree. Uh, so same thing. Melee weapons don't get a level four, but that's okay. Um, finally, there is one last crafting perk, uh, and I recommend everybody get armorer. Otherwise, you are reliant only on armor drops from enemies and pieces of armor you find um, lying around the wasteland. With Armourer, you can use the Armour Workbench to upgrade the armour that you find, make it as good as possible. If you follow the railroad uh, and uh, do a few quests for the railroad, you'll get access to Ballistic Weave for certain kinds of clothing. Um, and Ballistic Weave is excellent when upgraded using the Armourer perk. Uh, so that is something that I would absolutely recommend. Now a couple of other things, there's a set of uh, perks in the luck tree. Uh, now luck I have found synergizes very very well with agility and with gunslinger particularly. Um, because you can queue up a lot of shots in vats, uh, pistol users can get criticals like a lot more than somebody using say a rifle. Um, and there's the there's a few uh, high level luck perks 
that help with that. Um, up here at level six, there's better criticals. Uh, uh, better criticals is when you do a, a critical hit in VATS, you do extra damage. I should say it's not just in VATS, you have a, a small chance of doing a critical just randomly, but a triggered critical that you do by pu pushing the button when you're doing a, a shot in VATS um, uh, is what I was referring to. Uh, better criticals works for both kinds of criticals. Tr criticals that you choose to do and criticals that just happen randomly. And they just do more damage. This is like... Uh, I'm going to use an, an analogy to Dungeons and Dragons. If you don't know Dungeons and Dragons, I'm sorry, but this is how I think about it. This is uh, the rogue's sneak attack. Um, you do... When you, you do a, a small amount of damage baseline but when you get that that rare critical, it, it just ramps up to massive, massive damage. Uh, critical Banker, um, this allows you to do more criticals when they're really needed. Normally, you can only bank up one critical hit. Uh, your, your critical meter fills and you use it, and then you have to wait for your critical meter to fill again. With Critical Banker, you can make your critical meter fill twice, three times, four times, five times. Um, and so if you're fighting a super mutant behemoth and you have your 10 millimeter pistol, uh, you can just go critical, critical, critical. And particularly when you've got that better critical, each one of those criticals is going to do two and a half times as much baseline damage. Uh, you've also got Grim Reaper's Sprint. Now when you do, uh, when you kill in vats, you take down an enemy, there's a chance of refilling all of your action points and that is really great because pistol users uh, and vats users really rely heavily on that action point meter. Uh, at the top level, uh, you've, there's a, like a 35% chance to restore action points. Uh, four leaf clover, uh, each hit in vats, not just, not just kills, but every hit in vats has a chance of re just refilling your critical meter, which again is great. That lets you pour out those those criticals. So uh, a gunslinger who has uh, focused on agility and luck, uh, you can just spam criticals on on multiple enemies. You get, you get attacked by a swarm of of um, feral ghouls. Uh, six or seven feral ghouls at once, you just go bang, 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 and then critical, critical on the uh, glowing one that's, uh, that's following them. And it is really, really, really good. Um, the last perk that I want to uh, talk about for the moment, there's a, there's a whole lot more that you can uh, talk about and I may get onto those later, but the last one I want to talk about right now is this one, Life Giver. Now, I Again, like Armourer, I think this one is essential. I never, no matter what my build, I never fail to take Life Giver, and I never fail to take it as soon as possible. Uh, the first two levels, they just increase your health. That's good, that makes your character much more survivable, but the real game changer is at level three, and you are slowly regenerating health. and uh, that, That's just constant. This means you go into a fight, you dispatch all your enemies, one, one of the first habits that you get into is you've been hit a bunch, you look around, there are no more enemies, you pop a stim pack. Um, that way it gets your, uh, your health up to, up to a baseline uh, and gets you ready for the next sudden ambush. Uh, it means you don't have to like pop a stim pack before getting attacked, you pop a stim pack after the fight and uh, you're ready for the next time. Uh, three levels of life giver though, and you, that ceases to be as important because you finish a fight, you're going to go around and loot all the bodies, you're going to go around and search all the containers. While you're doing that, your health meter is slowly refilling. And so you don't need to pop that stim pack ready for the next fight because it's doing it by itself. And that is just fantastic when you hit 20th level uh, and get that that last point of life giver. Um, it's not so much noticeable when you get up to level 45, 50, 55, way up those high levels, the amount that it recovers is very, very slow and you have a big pool of hit points, so, it, so it's not as noticeable. 
but in level 20, 25, up to level 30, uh, it is really, really, really noticeable uh, how quickly that health meter is is refilled. You'll, you'll end up doing a fight, going around and looting, and you have a look at your health, and suddenly you're at full health again. And that's just, that's just really nice not to have to worry about. Um, okay, so I think I'll leave it there for now. That's my thoughts on uh, perks, guns, what type of weapons to use, uh, and other things like that, what, what perks you should get. Um, when starting out, I will always spend my first perk point on my weapon. Always and immediately upgrade whatever weapon you have um, using the appropriate crafting perk. Uh, second, I will spend on the crafting perk so I can uh, get better upgrades. Third, maybe something like lockpick or cap collector or, or one of the others. Third, fourth, um, uh, as soon as I uh, get to, uh, uh, what's that, level eight, I will have two points in life giver. And of course, when I hit level 20, immediately upon hitting level 20, plan for it, get life giver. So that's it, I will leave it here. I hope you have as much fun playing Fallout 4 as I do. And bye friends.